Praise the Lord, everyone. Today I want to get into this Bible study teaching entitled, Can Christians Eat Chicken, Beef, Pork, or Seafood? From time to time we get inquiring uh, souls who ask this question. Uh, they're very leery whether they can eat all types of meat or seafood. So we're going to get into that question here today. Let's take a look at John the Baptist's diet. He was the cousin of Jesus Christ. He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ, preaching the kingdom of God and preaching repentance and baptizing many individuals. He had a certain type of diet. The Bible is very clear. In Matthew chapter 3, the Bible states, And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins. Notice, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. This is what he ate, locusts and wild honey. He was doing the will of God. He was preaching the kingdom of God. Repentance for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he didn't have a, a very flamboyant uh, diet, but it was rather specific. The Bible states his meat was locusts and wild honey. How would you like to have your diet consist of these little creeping things here, locusts. Well, it's definitely something to get used to, but apparently John the Baptist uh, got used to it because that was, that was the meat that sustained him while he was doing the will of God. Jesus' statement on unclean foods. In Mark chapter 7, the Bible states, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Notice, there is nothing... Now, let me just stop here. The question that we get from people is whether they can eat certain meats because they feel certain meats, such as pork or you know certain beef, is, is unclean, and they shouldn't eat it. Well, the Bible says that Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, while he walked the earth... The living word of God, God's word made flesh, that man, Christ Jesus, stated, there is nothing from without or outside of a man that entering into him can defile him. Nothing but the things which come out of him. Those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus plainly says that there is nothing outside of a man that comes into a man that can defile him, but the things which come, which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. He's going to further elaborate, but we're going to speak here a little bit about the mouth. What comes out of the mouth, Jesus was referring to what comes out of the man, what comes out of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In Ephesians 4.29, the Bible states, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So corrupt, corrupt communication is what comes out of the man that defiles him. Okay, defiling of a man is not what goes into him, but it, it is what comes out of him, out of his mouth out of the man, through his actions, uh, through the words that he speaks. In Mark chapter 7, the Bible states, And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him according, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, and he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly. Now he's talking about foods. And goeth out into the drought, purging all meats. Now it comes out through the digestive system, and it comes out of the, uh, we don't have to get too uh, specific here. Uh, it's waste. That which is not necessary to remain in the body comes out as as, as, as a purging or a waste. That is why we go to the restroom. 
uh, to release waste. Okay, so what goes into the man doesn't defile him, but what comes out of the man will defile him. Because that which goes into the man goes, does not go into his heart, but into the belly and comes out of the drought or it's purged out of him through waste, through the, through the digestive system. But what comes out of the man is what defiles him, meaning, as we read in Ephesians 4.29, corrupt communication. Now, this can entail many things. Uh, sort of abrasive speech, uh, demeaning speech, slanderous speech. That's pretty popular nowadays. Uh, we have many so-called Christians. They're not really Christians. They like to slander others, speak falsely, lie. And what we've noticed is that many people who like to slander are usually the ones who are unlearned in the Word of God uh, because Christianity 101 tells us not to slander. Uh, the yeah. Bible clearly tells us not to uh, uh, cause discord among the brethren, not to sow discord. So a slandering tongue, a false accusing tongue, a lying tongue, these are abominations unto the Lord. These are the things that defile a man. It comes out of the mouth, out of the heart, it proceeds. The evil communication, the corrupt communication, that which is uh, corrupting to others, to the hearers. But he says in Ephesians, but only that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So we must make sure that the speech that we use in everyday life is that which is edifying to the hearers, not coarse language, uh, telling of jokes, humorous jokes, bathroom humor jokes, uh, 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 popular vernacular in today's society, following the fads of language. Our, our speech should not be that way. It should be that which becometh a Christian, that which is uh, with, with the etiquette of the nature of God, the etiquette of Christ, the, eti the etiquette of the body of Christ, saintly speech. Now, let's take a, a little look at Peter's vision here. Very important. Acts chapter 10. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending upon him, unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, or not so, Lord, for I have never, never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake again, unto him again the second time what God hath cleansed that call not thou common this was done thrice or three times and the vessel was received up again into heaven now this is a very important vision it's a twofold vision and one of the uh, uh, meanings that it that it is showing is that it's speaking concerning men or Gentiles Peter was a Jew and he was accustomed to the Jewish way of things. And they didn't fellowship with the Gentiles, and they didn't consider those uh, types of people uh, clean, in a sense. They were unclean. Okay, they were, they were defiled. Okay, they were outside of the, of the chosen of God, out, outside of Israel, outside of uh, the Jewish people. Now, Peter is given this vision, and he doesn't necessarily know too much about uh, its full uh, meaning as of yet, but he, he begins to understand as, as time goes on. But it's, it's telling us, number one, about Gentiles, about people, that God is going to not only allow his grace to be upon the Jews and salvation to the Jews, but since the Jews had rejected Christ and pretty much put him to death in a sense, now the door has been opened to the Gentile also. So salvation is not only for the Jews. 
The Gentiles also have the right to salvation. They can be grafted in, and they can be the children of God as well. Amen, through adoption. So it's speaking about men, that men are not defiled. If God calls them clean, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common concerning Gentiles. But we're also going to see that it's referring to meat as well. I mean, it's literally telling us or showing us through the vision that it's all manner of beasts, creeping things and four-footed beasts and fowls of the air, things that were considered unclean to the Jewish people. Now he's being told to rise, kill, and eat. And Peter refuses at first, and the, and the voice tells him three times that that which God has cleansed, do not call it common or unclean. So there's a, there's a twofold message here. Primarily it's the Gentiles. The door is going to be open to the Gentiles. But as we read further in the New Testament and the epistles, and especially in Timothy, we see that it's okay, it's allowable for uh, the Christian, the born-again Christian, to eat meat because it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And we're going to get into that. So when is it not okay to eat meat? The Bible tells us in Acts 15, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered unto idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Now in that time, uh, certain pagan practices uh, involved sacrificing a certain uh, animal unto what it, whether it was Dagon, Moloch, or whatever false god they worshipped, and they were to uh, offer that that meat offering unto their false god, and they would partake in eating the meat. At times, they would they would strangle these animals, and and then they would uh, you know they would siphon out the blood from these animals, and they would drink the blood. It, these were pagan practices. So Paul is saying that a person should not eat meat that is being offered, literally offered unto idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. We, are, we already know what that means, porneia in the Greek, which is sexual immorality. And from blood, notice from blood. Now there are some cultures that have certain dishes, uh, food items that are primarily blood or um, coagulated blood. Uh, my wife is Filipino and she comes from the Philippines and it's quite the practice there to eat a, a certain type of food called, I believe it's denaguan, deguan, denaguan or something that, uh, something like that. And uh, when we first came together years ago, uh, she, I believe she was partaking in that sort of food, but after me communicating with her how it's it's a it's a food it's blood it shouldn't be eaten it shouldn't be uh, uh, something that we drink and and she stopped uh, partaking in denaguan something that we do not uh, partake in in our household I mean there are plenty Filipino dishes that I enjoy but denaguan is not one of them praise the Lord so when not to eat meat as we just discussed in in the book of Acts there we've seen that. It, uh, food offered unto idols, meat offered unto idols, or blood, or things that are strangled. But now let's take a look at Romans 14. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know, Paul stating, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, if thy brother be grieved or is offended with your particular uh, eating habit or, or, or that sort of dish that you may have in front of him, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approveth of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another, 
Notice, for meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So what is this saying to us? It's telling us that those of us who are in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God, who understand the liberty that we have in Christ, we are allowed to eat all meat, as long as it's not strangled or offered unto idols and it's uh, full of blood. So we are allowed to eat all meat, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, there are certain brethren that may be offended because they are not meat eaters or they believe that it might be unclean. Uh, they lack knowledge. Uh, he says not to do these things because we're offending them and we're, we're making them weak, okay, because they can be offended and their, their conscience can be crushed and they can probably go back into sin. They can be so offended to where they'll go back into sin, and 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 they'll they'll maybe speak evil of you, slanderous things, and they're gonna they're gonna destroy themselves for being a slanderer, uh, for being a, a false accuser. Like I said, when I first started this, most false accusation and slander comes from individuals who are not learned in the Word of God. Uh, Peter says they twist the Word of God, they wrest the Scriptures to their own destruction because they're unstable and unlearned. So they speak hastily okay, about things they do not know. And that's what happens with these people who are weak and they're, 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 uh, they abstain from meat. They believe it's unclean. Uh, they're not able to rightly divide the covenants. They do not continue to read further into the, uh, the epistles to understand that uh, meat is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. A very simple scripture to read. Anyone could read that in Timothy. So, Whatever the case may be, they are brethren who are grieved with your meat. We as meat eaters, if we are around other brethren who don't eat meat, we're not going to flaunt it and say, hey, would you like to go out to KFC today? Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> it's on me, dinner's on me. No, we wouldn't do such a thing. We ought to be sensitive around them, those brethren, because we don't want to put a stumbling block before them, as Paul states here. So we watch our what we eat around these certain type of brethren. So we're told here that if we have faith, have it to thyself in God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. So there, there is a liberty uh, with, the, with the Christian who has uh, matured and who has understanding in these things. But he isn't to flaunt his liberty uh, before his weaker brethren. Amen. So yes, we have a Christian liberty in Romans 14. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it's not all about meat when you're in the Spirit of God. It's not all about drink. It's not all about these external things that go into the belly and satisfy the belly. No, it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When we walk in the Spirit and not in the lust of the flesh, when we have joy unspeakable, full of glory, when we are drunk, not with wine where there's excess, but we're filled with the Holy Ghost, then we can experience a little bit of heaven on earth through righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I don't need, personally, need the things that I used to need to make me joyful, to make me happy. I don't need the things that I used to need when I would smoke the things to make me peaceful like I used to. No, there's a whole different way of going about things when you're in the kingdom of God. You understand righteousness and the beauty of righteousness and the longing for righteousness. You understand peace and the necessity of peace when you're in the midst of chaos. You understand that the true joy is through the Holy Ghost and it's not through uh, self-medicating and drunkenness and carousing. This scripture is powerful. It's not about meat and drink. It's about righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is a Christian life fulfilled. If we could only get to this place 
where it's constant righteousness, constant peace, constant joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, we have a mortal body on this earth, so there will be there will be times when we will experience this, but there will be times when we're not experiencing this because it's not a constant until we get that which is immortal, that body which defies the laws of nature and doesn't corrode and corrupt and grow old when we get our new bodies and we dwell in that new place where there will be one and his name shall be one and he shall be king over all the earth and he shall be a constant radiance a constant light and he shall emanate that glory of God in his kingdom forever we shall dwell with the king of kings and the Lord of lords and there will be no unrighteousness there will be no chaos and wars there will be no depression and anxiety and paranoia but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost of God now let's take a look at first Timothy 4 the scripture I referred to earlier it's a scripture that non meat eaters or those who are offended by meat eaters those who are against eating meat, apparently they refuse to see this scripture or they have read it, but they don't believe it or they don't take heed to it, but it's here in plain sight for all of us to see. First Timothy chapter 4 states, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now notice, they give heed to, to the seducing of spirits and doctrines of devils. Notice, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and what? Commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe. Notice, believe and know the truth. So those who believe and know the truth are those who will be meat eaters. They will understand that these are uh, animals and, and creatures that God has created, and they are received with thanksgiving. We believe and we know the truth. We don't doubt and abide in false doctrine, doctrines of devils. We don't give heed to seducing spirits, lying spirits. No, we believe and we know the truth. We understand God created these animals, and nothing that goes into a man can defile a man. Why? Because it goes into his belly and it is purged through the digestive system and it comes out in the form of waste. But what comes out of a man, as, if we, as we read earlier, is that which proceeds out of the mouth or is corrupt communication or actions that partake in uh, revelry and sin, that exhibit sin. So it's what comes out of the man through his actions, through his mouth, evil communication is what defiles a man, but not what goes into a, into a man. For every creature of God is good. Let me repeat that. Every creature of God is good. Now remember when Peter had the, uh, the trance, the vision of the four-knitted corner sheet coming down from the heavens, and there upon it stood every manner of beast, fowls of the air, creepy things, crawling things, four-footed beasts. Rise, kill, and eat, Peter. Not so, Lord. Rise, kill, and eat. Rise, kill, and eat. Three times he heard the voice. That which God has called clean, call not thou common. We just read that. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Let me repeat, nothing to be refused. Now, this doesn't contradict Acts 15. Uh, we have to harmonize the scriptures. If there is a certain type of meat that's being offered unto idols, and it's being extracted or siphoned. The blood is being siphoned out of it uh, to drink uh, the vessel of blood of that animal because it's 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 a, a pagan ritual or some sort of weird occult ritual. No, we are not to partake in that sort of uh, feast. But nothing is to be refused. Every creature of God is good if 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 it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. That is why we pray over our food. That is why we pray over our food, because it's being sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Whether it's a pork chop, 
a lamb chop, <laughs> a beef chop. Is there such thing as a beef chop? <laughs> Whether it's uh, to the Filipino people out there, the tocino, as my wife mentioned to me, something that I really like, but uh, too much of anything is not a good thing, folks. Now, you like the tocino, you like the, uh, the, the pork chop, you got to watch out because too much of that cannot be good for you. Too much of the cow, too much of the beef cannot be good for you. You know, too much of anything is just not good for you. There must be moderation, a balance. Happy is a man that does not condemn himself. Remember, we just read that in Romans uh, 14, I believe. Now, in conclusion, let's take a look at Hebrews 5. It states, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both evil and good. So there you have it. Those of us who have our senses exercised and we understand and believe that all these creatures come from God and nothing's to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving, for it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer, that we have a liberty as Christians. We're no longer under the old covenant where they abstain from particular insects and, and you know, uh, certain meats and whatnot. Uh, the point of the matter is that nothing defiles a man when it goes into a man because it goes into the belly, but it's out of the man that which defiles, that which the man is defiled by what comes out of the man. If you're a Christian, you're coming new to the faith, we can explain these things to you. But if you put up a rebuttal and contention, that just shows you're just being an annoyance. And at that point, we just have to let you go. So don't, brethren who are, who are skilled in the word or brethren who are at liberty to eat meat, don't offend the weak brethren who are on milk. Even though you may have a liberty to eat these things, there are some brethren that are not at liberty because their conscience uh, is at stake. And if they go against their conscience, they sin. Uh, they're being made weak. So let's keep these things in mind. Let's do the things which call for peace. As he said, let's make for peace. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you in Jesus' name.